Well, let's talk to Dr. Bob Arnott. He's a medical correspondent who's previously researched Ebola. He joins me via Skype from Nantucket Island near Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, Dr. Arnott, good to have you back on the program. We understand that both U.S. medical workers being treated in Atlanta have been given this experimental ZMAP serum, and their condition seems to have improved so far. What do we know about this treatment? So here's what we know about it, Darren. First of all, it's what we call a monoclonal antibody. To be very clear about that, you know, antibodies are what's uh, in the bloodstream to basically, you know, fight off various bugs or, or parts of bugs. In this particular case, there are three monoclonal antibodies, each one of which attacks a part of the Ebola virus, a key part of the virus. It changed very rapidly, so there's some hope with this. Uh, we also know that... Uh, this was uh, funded by, of course, the, the Canadian American governments, but primarily, Darren, because it is a Class A bioterror threat. That's the interest in it. Um, many people, though, Dr. Arnott, will ask the question if the Americans had the serum which can be used for treating their people, why hadn't they sent it to Africa before to treat people there? So. It's never been tried on human beings before. It's been tried in rhesus mon monkeys and very successfully. That is, if you give this one hour after infection, 100% of the rhesus monkeys survive. After 48 hours, roughly two thirds. So there have been no human trials. But Darren, I put it the other way. If we took this serum and sent it to Africa and we tried it on Africans, there'd be a huge amount of criticism about experimenting on them. So in a very real way, by these doctors stepping forward and becoming the first volunteers, They've cleared the way for this to be used on Africans as they gear up production. In terms of production, it's a very interesting technology that actually uses tobacco. And because of this, it's good manufacturing practices. It can be done relatively quickly, relatively inexpensively, uh, of course, still months away. But it gives some real hope if this uh, terrible, terrible epidemic continues. Why has it taken so long, though, for the drug companies to get their act together uh, and develop a vaccine? Uh, is it because the, the disease is confined to Africa, perhaps? Darren, you hit the nail right on the head. This is what we call a... Uh, there's no interest at all. In fact, pharmaceutical companies aren't involved in this. You know, pharmaceutical companies spend hundreds of millions of dollars to have drugs that have billion-dollar payoffs. This is what they call a low-kill African disease, a very kind of prejudicial term, but it's a, a few hundred patients or maybe a thousand patients every five or ten years. So zero interest. The funding, to be clear, came from the U.S. Defense Department. The strategy was worked out at USAMRID, which is the U.S. Army Infectious Disease Center in Maryland, very, very good, world-class unit. But the interest in it was because if U.S. armed forces were in a country where there was Ebola and they become infected, they want to be able to treat them. Or, and they haven't been able to do but if it's weaponized, it is a class okay. A threat uh, to, to soldiers and anyone around. So there Let, just hasn't been any interest. Let me get a final thought from you, Dr. Arnott. Um, the World Bank's allocating, they say, $200 million uh, in emergency assistance uh, for countries trying to battle uh, the Ebola outbreak. How should that money be spent on the ground in terms of trying to contain the disease? So, Darren, great question. It should really mirror HIV AIDS, and that is the money's got to go into basic health infrastructure so that the hospitals have the capability of treating these patients, giving them so the, the supportive care that they need, and undertake very, very vigorous contact case tracing so that every single person that has been exposed to this is tracked down and then quarantined long enough to make certain that they don't have the disease. A smaller part of that, of course, can, of course, go to a vaccine, which looks quite promising, and to this MZAP therapy, which one would hope would gear up very rapidly now that there's so much interest in this really terrific technique and novel breakthrough. D Dr. Babanet, thank you for talking to Al Jazeera. Thank you, Darren.